This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Braxton versus Braxton. Uh, you all have been together for four years, married for three, yes. and you have two daughters together. Yes, yes. Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Braxton, why have you brought your wife to court today? I'm here to see if my wife cheated with her ex-boyfriend. Oh. That's why I'm here today. My family means a lot to me, and uh, got a cloud hanging over our family right now, and I just want to get past it. And I'm a man that stands on principles, so I don't want to be a statistic as far as a divorcee, and I got daughters, so I want them to see a solid man. Braxton, what are you here to prove? I'm here to prove that I've been faithful to my husband. Um, I know that some actions that I might have taken might have been wrong, but as far as any infidelity or anything like that, I have only been with my husband. And I want to let him know so that we can get the trust back and move forward and just take care of our family and be happy. So, what is the current status of your relationship? Are you all together? What does it look like in your uh, home? It's definitely gotten rocky because, you know, we're a real solid family. We have, you know, schedules and different things like that. Now it's more like one foot in, one foot out. I got stuff in the car, trunk, brother's house, couch, wherever. And I just... That's not what I got married for. I want my husband home. I want him to sleep with me and not downstairs. Um, that's, that's why we're married, is to be together. <clears throat> All right, so, Mr. Braxton, you essentially have got one foot already out the door, and it's all because you believe she's cheating. In, in so many words, Your Honor, yes. All right. So, if it turns out that she is cheating, you're gone. The consequences is going to be devastating. And you understand what is at risk? Yes. If my husband was to leave me, I would have to learn what it's like to become a single mother. That's something I know nothing of. Um, our family would be devastated financially. I do work part-time, but he's the primary breadwinner in our home, and I can't afford to lose him. So the stakes are high? Very high. Really, we're at home together, but we're not dealing with each other. It feels like we're going through the motions sometimes. You know, Where are you sleeping? Usually, uh... <laughs> Sometimes on the couch, sometimes at my brother's crib. I mean, I ain't gonna... She doesn't even know this, but I've slept in the car before, just because... Okay, so you want him back in your bed? Yes, I do. Moreover, right. she wants her husband. She don't want yes. a roommate, she wants her husband. Yes, Your Honor. And you want your wife. Of course, yes. So what I'm hearing from both of you, you want it to be like it was in the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Tell me what that was like. Um very in love, um, very attracted to one another. He's very caring and attentive. When he and I met, we met at Mutual Friends, and, and when I saw him, I was very attracted to him, and I noticed him looking at me, and we just kind of locked eyes for a minute. It was just like everything froze. I felt like I was on the hunt, and I, you know, <laughs> I, had to, I had to get it, you know what I mean? I can't explain it. It's like... <laughs> You it's saw like what you wanted, and seeing you seeing a deer. You know what I mean. I just had I, I wanted it. You know what I mean. I, I wanted right. her. I know what I wanted for my life. So. He pays attention to everything. Wants to know if I've ate. You know. Wants to know how I'm doing. He's very intellectual, and that really turned me on and was the best thing about him. Is what's going on up here the sexy? Absolutely. I got you. Right, but don't get it wrong now. <laughs> I put it down to make sure uh, I can... Oh, you know my saying? goodness. Uh, it's more than just words, but that's what that's separated true. her from the rest. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> Conversation's great. You know, being a gentleman is great. Being attentive is great. But there's but another the component. The yeah, there's another and, component to it also. And you can't lose that component. You're right. Uh, that has to be there. And so that's why... I, I mean, that's part of the reason why <laughs> I want to make sure we stay together um, because we just complement each other very well. And we're life partners, and he's my teammate, and I just want to make sure we're in good standing. All right. Well, so where did it go wrong? Yeah. You know, we got in a fight a while back, and... um. It was really, really bad. You know, it's probably the worst fight we've ever had as a couple, you know. Uh, it was some issue over the kids, basically, you know. And she wanted to uh, go somewhere, and I wasn't feeling I was trying to keep my kids together. I have one other child. Well, Your Honor, the thing is that um, I wanted to take my daughter with me, and I was pregnant at the time. And when he didn't want me to take her with me, and he had her, and he left the house, and I wasn't able to find them, and, you know, I just felt like... My motherhood was being attacked. I felt like, why aren't you giving me our baby? Oh. 
that's when it blew up. Well, to I mean, the point, Your Honor, where when I left to go to the party for my family member to go away to the military, um, I stayed um, at my grandmother's house for a week. It was so much of a blow up that I didn't think we were going to even reconcile. I thought that it was going to be over. So this is a big argument you all had. Yes, Your Honor. During the argument, things were so heated and everything like that that I ended up mouthing off to authorities because of anger and ended up in handcuffs. And that's not even, that's not her. So I can, I, I won't let her just go out like that. That's not her. She ain't, she ain't like that, but I knew it was because she was pregnant. Just to be 100, she was acting differently than she normally does. So in your mind, this was not a relationship ending argument? No. And ultimately you got through it and you got back together? Right, and I'm thinking we on up and up, like, okay, that's behind us. But something just keep tugging at me. I'm like, man, you was gone. You in your hometown. I'm not there. You was angry at me. You got something you need to tell me. Like, now's the time. We're not mad at each other. We're not going to run out of here. We're not going to do nothing. Right, that. right. So she, she confided in me and told me that she, uh, through social media, uh, hit her ex up through Facebook, got a phone number, called him, says he brought her an apple pie or something like that. And they chill. She was pregnant, so that ain't too far. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> and she says they just kicked it in, in his vehicle oh. at her grandmother's house. And I'm like, what? I um, sent a message to him because of the argument, and I asked him for his number and told him that I just wanted to talk. And he came and brought me what my craving, my apple pie at the time, and we just talked. This was during the time you all had the big argument? Yes, Your Honor. And you're okay. at your grandmother. The time yes, that you Your believed Honor. your marriage was basically over. Yes. And you hit up your ex on Facebook, and you went to him to confide in him, to talk to him. Yes, that is true, Your Honor. Were you talking to him about your marriage? I was talking to him about the things that we were going through. Yes, I was. Um, so I feel like, do I not have her heart? You know what I mean? Then I, I mean, Your Honor, I feel like I put it down in every aspect. You know, that makes me feel like, okay, am I inadequate in some way or something? Like, what's going on here? You know what I mean? I seen the cat. And I'm like, it's, for real? Uh, okay, you know okay so I mean? wait, like, wait, <laughs> hold on, hold on. How long after this did you find out that this interaction took place? Like maybe five months afterwards, or four months, or so. I'm not. I'm not sure, but it was a while ago. So that's what I'm saying. It was like revisioning, like uh, like everything flash forward. Because when she initially told me and confessed it, I swallowed it. I kept my cool because, Your Honor, I want my wife to be able to come to me even when she mess up. Mm -hmm. Just come and let's see if we can get past it. Give me that opportunity, that choice to see if I want to stay or not. But don't have me living no lie. Why would you wait five months to tell him, Your that? Honor? I was afraid of the way that he would react in losing my family. I was afraid that he would leave me right then. See, when I done this, yes, it was wrong, but I was acting out of anger. I was upset, and just to be honest with you, Your Honors, it's just I've been with him and been faithful, and I felt attacked with my character and all kind of things, and I just felt if I talked to somebody else, maybe I can feel like I still had it. You know, I, I mean, just to be honest, I know that sounds crazy, but that's the reason why I've done it. Wow. So, have you been in communication with your ex since? No, Your Honor. Not in any way, shape, or form. Were you visiting with him because you wanted to bounce off of him, or was he your backup plan? I just... Like you said, as you put it, wanted to bounce off of them. Okay. Do you believe that, Mr. Braxton? I don't know what to believe. Ooh. That's what the whole problem is. Like, I want to. Interaction talking in the car sounds way better than sex. You know what I'm saying? And you think so, there was sex? I think it's a possibility. And I'm wondering, like, uh, you know, what other avenues of communications is being done or dealt with? Look where my mind was at and her mind was at in the same argument. I'm at home not even thinking about, like, I didn't have no, like... I, I mean, I but during the home. argument, like, things during the argument, you talk real strong. You yeah. say real, a whole lot of stuff That's that true. maybe you might not mean, and you hurt me when you were saying all of those things. You made me feel disrespected, and I didn't appreciate it. I felt like, well, why am I going through this if he thinks all of these things about me? Like, I, I'm still a woman. I think I still look good. I think I still have qualities that other people would want. I have things to offer, I still got it, and I wanted to feel that. And so, you waited six months, five or six months to tell him that. All this time, for a year, it's been spinning in his head. What else isn't she telling me? If you had come home, you tell me if I'm wrong, Mr. Braxton, if she had come home and said, look, 
I was angry. I was so angry. I reached out to another man to find out, am I wrong? You wouldn't have liked it, but you would have felt differently because she came straight to you with the truth. Exactly. That would have showed that loyalty that I wanted next to me, and I could have just wrapped that up and moved on because I wasn't going to beat her over the head with it. Well, here's the deal. We have invited a friend of the court to come and talk to us about what it's like to deal with a partner or spouse when there are questions of infidelity. We would like to invite Trina Braxton to come and share with us. Ron, would you escort her into the court? Yes, Your Honor. All right, come on in. Okay. We're going to sit right up next to the judges, please. Hello, Your Honors. Hello. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Great. It is good to see you. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> There's no relation. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, we were going <laughs> to clarify yeah, that. We were clarify. <laughs> We don't know that. So good to see you. Thank you <laughs> for taking time out of your busy schedule from your TV show. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here because we need for you to help and share some things with them from your perspective. Okay. Uh, I have some experience. <laughs> we know. Uh, we this. know. I have two husbands. Um, <laughs> one of the first things I'm going to say is this. If your spouse or your significant other is doing something that you don't want them to do or if, if they're doing something that you wouldn't want done to yourself, that's cheating. Just period. It just is. Because you have to put yourself in that other position. Uh, the argument that you guys had that led up to this situation, she felt like the words that you said hurt her in such a way to where she felt like she still had to feel like she was wanted in a way. So it had absolutely nothing to do with your prowess, <laughs> but it had to do with the way you spoke with her. And you can't be so busy putting it down by be being busy putting her down. Mm. You can't do that. It's not gonna work. But at the same time, communication is key. If you're gonna let it go, let it go. But if you're not going to, let them go because it's not worth it. Yeah. It's just not because it's gonna be a constant circle of overly rehashing again and again and again, and nothing is gonna be ever resolved because you're gonna keep reliving it. All right, so is there anything that you've done in a relationship that later you kind of regretted and, th and thought, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done that? Mm, I mean, that's with everyone, but um, let me tell you one thing about regret. Regret is moot, but so is pride. Pride is an emotion a person in love cannot afford. You gotta put it behind you. You really, really do. Well, Ms. Braxton, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. This was the kind of information we wanted to hear. Yes. And I think our litigants need to hear so that they can make good choices about this, this passionate love that they clearly have for mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. It resonates. It resonates. You guys are both still in love with each other. You have to be in love or let it go. Pick one. Can't have both. This is a marriage on the line. Uh, you've accused her of cheating with an ex-boyfriend. She's denied that she had any kind of sexual contact with her ex-boyfriend. And so to get to the bottom of this, uh, the court has retained the services of a licensed private investigator, Kendall Schull, who is a former special agent with the FBI. Ron, would you please show Mr. Schull into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. How are you, Mr. Schultz? Good to see Good, you. Thank Good to see you. you. Very much, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Schultz, would you please tell the court what type of examination you performed in this case? In this particular polygraph, I used what we call a single theme polygraph examination. Even though we asked three different questions on the polygraph exam, all those three questions are focused on one specific area or concern. So you asked Mrs. Braxton these three questions. One, the week you left your husband, did you have sex with your ex-boyfriend? Two, since being married to your husband, have you had sexual intercourse with your ex-boyfriend? Three, the day when your ex-boyfriend brought you an apple pie, did you have sexual intercourse with him? What was her response to these questions? Mrs. Braxton's responses to all three of those questions was no. What did the polygraph determine based on her responses? Polygraph determined that there were equally significant responses to all the questions that I asked, all responding no. And in addition, there were no fluctuations 
in her responses at all. All right. So, so what does that tell you about her responses? Was she being truthful? She was being truthful. I'm sorry about that. All right, Mr. Braxton, how you feeling? I got a lot of making up to do. All right. Uh, Mr. Culler can give you some tips about how to make it right. <laughs> um, Mrs. Braxton, let me just say, I'm so glad that you were telling the truth. Me too. Thank you. We plan to be at your 25th wedding anniversary, so I want to invite. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Braxton, keep putting it down. <laughs> <laughs> You've been together five years. You have one child together and another on the way. Tell me why you have initiated your case today, Ms. Howard. Well, I'm here today to, to prove that Quentin, he is cheating with my cousin. Ooh. With your cousin? cousin? Yes, my first cousin. Oh! oh, no. We're the only two females. That is messy, messy, messy. Mr. Isaac, you gotta respond to that. No, I gotta hear about this. <laughs> it's not true. It's not true. It's not it's, true. You it's got a made up story. You said you're not involved with her cousin. At all. You're not cheating with her or anybody else for that matter, are nope. you? No, sir. And you're here to prove that today yes. to her once and for all. I'm I'm here because I'm tired of hearing about it. It's like from day one since I met her, I've been here. You're all oh, you're cheating with my cousin. Right. From day her, one, the first day she stepped in my house. This has been a cloud over this relationship the whole time. And hey, look, she's got a baby on the way. What does that feel like? It feels devastating. I'm, I'm hurt because I have a, a a ten month by him already, baby, baby boy, and then I have another baby boy on the way. I'm seven months. I'm hurt because this is my life. You're seven months pregnant. You think he's sleeping with your cousin. So not only are you talking about potentially a relationship between you two, but you're talking about a family relationship yeah, being family. destroyed. And we both have our oldest sons. So Wait. we're all a family. So all of that is in jeopardy today... Yes. ...based on what evidence we hear and uncover in this courtroom. Miss Howard, you have a book in your hand. Is that a Bible? Yes, ma'am. Tell me about why you have a Bible because this is where all my faith is. I feel like God is my witness. Mm -hmm. He know where I'm coming from. Okay. That's where that comes from. All right, so you... This there is your support. Yes. In this time. Yes. And, you know, oftentimes it's like not a specific person, but you have a specific person, that being your cousin. Why is that? Why do you believe it's your cousin? Because how she approached herself. Mm -hmm. The first visit, the first visit, you knew I had a man. You heard him in the background. She came to visit you? Yes, the first day, yes. And he was in the house with me. We were starting our relationship moving in together. So you all are moving into a new place, yes. you and Mr. Osley. Yes. And your cousin comes over. Yes. And what happens when she comes over? First thing, she was dressed inappropriate. She had on her tight V-neck tights with her uh, things showing down there. Ooh. Clean leaves out. Just the whole cat bodysuit. Mm -hmm. So okay, now, was, was, she so was she helping you move in? She wasn't over there for me. Was, was she, she helping you move in? She because... never met me, so how would she I be mean... there for me? Because she knew a man that was in the picture. But here's the thing. He can't control what she's wearing. Yes, that's so, true. So, you know, you... She comes over, she's dressed inappropriately. That's not his fault. That's a decision she made. Okay. Okay, I so mean... why do you think it was more to it than just the way she was dressed? Okay, well, first off... She came over. She's a big drinker. Okay. So she came over with her bottles ready to get me drunk, basically. Get you drunk? Yes. Okay. Why do you think she was trying to get you drunk? Because I can't. I told her that I'm a light drinker. Okay. So we, we kind of went overboard a little bit. And it's kind of like more of a manipulating thing. Okay. So we was in the kitchen and la da 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 da, drinking. You know, next thing you know, I passed out. All right. And then I woke up and I seen her above me and I'm looking everywhere. Where's Quentin at? Okay. I look down the hallway. Where he at? In the next living room, walking around. Okay. And I ask her, how did I get here? Oh, I dragged you back here. I'm but just, it was just trying to her. understand. Are you, are you thinking that she was trying to get you drunk so she could be with him? Yes. And you think that she wow. slept with him that night? Yes, I do. Okay, you so while that. you were passed out... While I was passed out. They, they got, got it all. You, your man slept with your cousin. Yes. Mr. Osley, this is my question. Did you sleep with her cousin no. that night? No. That didn't happen. At all. At all? At all. 
She just made that up. She, she made, Don't know where she, she, she made, got that she from. She made the part of us sleeping together uh, because the situation is like, just because you passed out and how your cousin is dressed, you're saying, oh, we had to do something with her. And you're saying that didn't happen? No. Okay. Miss Howard, do you have any other proof that your cousin is, in fact, the one he's cheating with? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, tell me about that. Incident, me and him both were sleeping in bed one night. This is another night she spent the night. So, he wakes me up, taps me on my shoulder, tells me my cousin is stripping butt naked. What? <laughs> She's so, what? Stripping. So, okay. what I do is, I look. She's actually stripping her clothes. I said, John Keithia, what she do? Fall over. Hit the flow. That's not so, right. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You're in the bed sleep. He wakes you up, and your cousin... Both together. ...is stripping her clothes off. Yes, in the hallway. In, your be- in the hallway or in your in bedroom? In the doorway, basically. In the doorway, in the doorway to the, the bedroom. doorway right here. Is this I'm true? In- I'm innocent. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm telling you straight up. I'm innocent. Because... I don't know. I don't know about that, Mr. Osley. <laughs> The situation was all three of us was watching a movie. She's laying on the floor or whatever, sleep. Me and Kiki's in the bed or whatever like that, sleep or whatever. Yeah. So, boom, I hear the boom, I wake up. So, when I turn to look towards the, the, the doorway of our room, Shade standing there fully dressed at the moment. So, I'm like, Shade, what you doing? She immediately starts taking her clothes off. Ooh. She had her eyes closed, though, but she starts taking her clothes off. So, boom, she starts caressing her body or whatever. So, I play with herself. So right like, there, right there in, in front, front of you. Of me, okay, baby. in the doorway doing okay. it. Okay. So, what did you do? Up. I you woke her up like, and baby, said, what? what is your cousin doing? <laughs> So you think the cousin was coming at, was kind of trying to get your attention? Try, try, basically trying to have sex. Basically, if you and you say and you say you did the right thing by saying, "Hey, look, look at what's going on." Exactly, because your cousin, this is the person that's trying to get me. She's right. trying to get me to do. And you've never done anything with this cousin. You know, nope. but here's my thing: you already had this issue with this cousin. Why in the world are you letting her spend the night again? That's a good question. That's a good question. Me and her both, Your Honor. We're both been going through a lot. Our whole family is, you know, discombobulated, and I'm trying to get to know my family. This is the only female in the family, and I feel like me and her was trying to reach out to each other. But in the midst, I got my man, and I'm starting a relationship with him. And of course, she's a female, so, you know, I wouldn't think that my own cousin would, you know, turn around on me like that, purposely wise. But if he's sitting with your own eyes, like. Well, I get it. Come on now, you and then you're but accusing me of But in the, the midst of anything. trying to get to know her, she, you believe she's now sleeping with your man? Yes, I do. Well, there's your side, there's Mr. Osley's side, and there's your cousin's side. She is here to testify to that. <laughs> Rob, would you start the witness here? Yes, sir. Go right up to the witness stand. Good day, ma'am. How are you? I'm all right. Miss Wheaton, you've uh, been listening to the testimony? Of course I have. All right. Did you come over the day they were moving in dressed provocatively? I remember exactly what I had on. I had on some white tights and I had on a black shirt. I remember it was cold outside. So I had snow boots on. You know, I came over dressed appropriately. It was not too cold outside. It was cold outside. Did you come with yeah, alcohol? You Stop problem. interrupting me. You already had your chance. <laughs> Did you have alcohol? <laughs> yes, I did. And then she know I didn't come over to get her drunk. She told me she was dehydrated. That's why she passed out. How do you feel to know that your cousin, your first cousin, is accusing you of sleeping with her boyfriend? She's off in the head. <laughs> but how do you feel about it? I feel hurt, but I done got a little used to it. You know, she's my you cousin. You got used to I'm not finished. <laughs> she is my cousin. Used to I, I'm not finished. Miss Howard, Miss Howard, all. we are Wait. trying to get her testimony. Yes, ma'am. I will be quiet for you. All right, thank you. Do you feel that Mr. Osley is attracted to you? Yes, I do. I was on um, the couch, sleep downstairs, and I get woken up out of my sleep, and I have slop on my chest, and he has my hand. He tells me to come upstairs, and I told him no. And I was woken up twice out of my sleep that day. I mean, that night. And I never did get up. Okay. I stayed asleep. So he came what? on to you? Yes, he did. What, what was he a... doing to you? You said you had slobber on your chest. Obviously, he was kissing on my chest while I was asleep. 
So he was how, kissing how do you your breast. Kissing on your chest or not? Because you had slob on my chest. What else would you be doing? How anybody could have put that there? Who? Oh, <laughs> what, 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 what? Nobody else there. Sweating. How you know it's me? But you admitted to Kiki that you did it. If you, so if you how do you tell know it's me? me? First off, I okay, didn't hold tell on. you. Hold on. At hold the on. end of the day, he admitted to Kiki that he did it. So that clears all that up right there. Did you oh, admit that? Leader. I admitted it, but I'm saying, how did you know that I had anything to do? You're saying you just what woke up. What does it matter? Well, you just woke up. I, what I want to know is, how did her breast fall into your mouth? Okay, <laughs> I'll tell you the story from the beginning to the end. <laughs> anyway, me, me, me and Kiki was having sex, right? So while we're having sex or whatever, Sade's downstairs on the couch or whatever, sleep. She tells me to go down there and check on her. I'm like, what you telling me to check on her for or whatever like that? She's like, you know how my cousin because is. Because you don't hit the up numerous times she passed out. That's, that's basically why she told that's me to go, check, go on check, check on her, on her. I know how my cousin is. Okay, anyway, so wait, wait, wait. So, you said she says that now. What did she say at the time? Okay, at the time, me and her were having sex. So why would you send me downstairs when you're already accusing me of me and her having sex? Why in the world would you tell him to go check on your cousin in the middle of your we intimate first moment? Though, we were not having sex. I don't know what he was doing. Maybe he was trying to get some, but I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't trying to do nothing at she that point in time. Who was having sex? Okay, you well, it don't too, matter. I said it. go check on my cousin. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold, hold on. Hold on. The light bulb just went off in my head. Okay, because I'm sitting here going, what? <laughs> Mr. Osley, were you trying to get a threesome together? Oh. I basically... The, the situation... The situation is... Ron was, oh. th look, Ron was thinking it. Ron no, was thinking it. Ding, 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 he says they were having sex. She says they weren't having she, He was trying, but she wasn't interested. So he was I trying to do something to get her interested. Uh, so he went down to get the cousin. He tried uh, to. I didn't want her up there, and she didn't want to be up there. Uh-huh. So, Mr. Osley, <laughs> so you wanted to have a threesome with your girl and her cousin. No, I didn't want to have a threesome, but all these different occasions is basically making me lead on to that point to where it's like, I feel like y'all want, like, a three-way relationship or something like... So, Ms. Howard, the evidence that we've heard today is that she came over the first time you all moved in together. She came in dressed inappropriately. You believe she got you drunk to sleep with him and, in fact, did so. The other is that he admitted to you that he had sucked on her breast. Yes. Uh, the final thing is that the night that you all... you went up to his bedroom, he went down to talk to your cousin. You think he was trying to sleep yes, with her? Yes, because I, I kept calling him, but he never came back to the bed with me. Based on all of this, you believe that Mr. Osley is sleeping with your first cousin? Yes. And if he is sleeping with your cousin, your family is going to be destroyed. You will lose your cousin, and you already have a child or an expecting another. Is that correct? We don't even yes, speak yes, no more. Your Honor. Just because it is. All right. Well, that's what we have, Mr. Cutler. This court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call licensed private investigator Eric Eccles and licensed polygraph examiner Tommy Platt into the courtroom to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Ron, please escort them in. Gentlemen. <laughs> On this side of the Our whole team of experts. How are you, gentlemen? How you doing, Your Honor? Good, good. Thanks for being here. Mr. Eccles, can you tell us what you did to investigate the cheating allegations in this case? Yes, Your Honor. I sat in a room with Ms. Osley, posing as a person who was coming to court who was accused of cheating. My goal was to find out if Mr. Osley was cheating himself. All right. Can you tell us about your interaction with Mr. Osley? Well, Your Honor, from the start, Mr. Osley was very comfortable with me. It is clear that Mr. Osley is a sexual charged individual. He spoke to me in length about doing threesomes, and there were some other behaviors that I found to be very questionable. Because there are still questions to further investigate this matter, we had Mr. Osley to undergo a polygraph examination and we have those results. Mr. Platt, you conducted that polygraph examination, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Osley was asked, 
During your five-year relationship with Ms. Howard, have you ever had sexual intercourse with her cousin, John Keithia Sade Wheaton? What was his response to that question? He stated no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that. The lie detector determined that. He was being deceptive. What? What? Bisexual intercourse, what does that mean? <laughs> What, what I'm talking about as far as like even him putting his hand, putting his mouth on my chest. You wasn't no good. Girl, girl, you, you cheated too. You don't even know if your baby here. Shut the hell up. Oh. I bet you we could do a DNA test and it's his. You just jealous. You wanted my girl, you relationship. Have sex I knew it. it. You got it. She is saying that y'all gonna be done. I know. The only way that you could potentially make this work is if you come clean. I told her what I did, I told her already. But the thing that I told her that I cheated on her, she already knows that. I don't get how I'm getting deceptive or whatever. I want you to look at Miss Howard, though. Look at her. Look in her eyes. I'll be real with you, though, know, bro. It's OK. I got God the, with the me. Time, the the time other than what I told you, ain't nothing else happening. Because he my witness. I'm with God. I'm in a better place. But you being deceptive you supposed in the court, to be though. But you being deceptive okay in the court. Because I've right. been it from day Girl, you one. Been Lady, Lady, Girl, you Lady, you Lady, ain't nothing you. from day one. And guess what? Thank you. When, I'm sorry. You can't even talk about it. We're not already Miss Howard. Miss Howard. I'm sorry. Miss Howard, you came here to get answers. And you've gotten answers. Thank you. What do you want to do with this relationship with Mr. Osley? He just could take care of his kids. I'm going to just live, you know, do better. I noticed that you all have been married for 10 years and that there's an, almost a 10-year age difference between you all. And you are here, Miss Newton, seeking the truth. Tell me why you're here. Well, Your Honor, um... I'm here because I want to find out if he's, if, if he's cheating on me. Okay. Because I see signs of the earring that I found in his car. Okay. He said... I will presume it wasn't your earring. No, Your Honor. Is that the earring? Yes, ma'am. Now, you... It was it earrings or... A two. It's a, it's a set. Well, Miss Newton, if he found them, you wouldn't have seen them before, right? Yes. So it's very possible that he found them and wanted to give them to you. Right? Well, that's what he said. He found the gift to me. But you don't believe him? But I don't believe him. All of that has made you think something's going on here. Yes. Your woman's intuition is going ding, 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 ding. Yes. All right, Mr. Newton, she said she got <laughs> some things she's seeing. What's she seeing? Well, I've never seen the earrings, never in life. I didn't even know where these earrings even came from. Okay. But did you find them? Yes, I found them in my car. And when you found them, what did you do? Yeah, I just gave her these earrings so that I make sure that she was cool with the situation. She and, wasn't. And she, and she wasn't. Uh -huh. and so I you, you didn't try to hide it. You didn't try to... You came... No. Hey, I found these earrings. I okay, found these Mr. earrings. Mr. Cutler, how some earrings gonna get in your car unless somebody dropped them or left them? That's probably what happened. But what he said who was... Is, who dropped the earrings? There it is. Who dropped them? Nobody. I don't know where these earrings came from. I've never even seen these earrings a day in my life. Okay, so what woman was in your car? Right. If no it woman. wasn't her, what other woman was in your car? There's no other woman that that's part. ever been in my car. So, I, I don't have any answers. Well, I think I'm still, I, but I think I'm still right, Mr. Cutler. You always think you're right. That's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have these warning signs. Yes. Is there anything in your relationship that highlights or make these warning signs Well, we had important? difficulties in the past. Can yep. you tell me about the past cheating? Well, I was on my way to uh, my grandmother's funeral and a situation happened. He's supposed to went with me, but he, he couldn't go. But while I was out there, I had the, the same feeling, and when I came back, it was a lady I knew, and they had did some things, you know, and she called and let me know. Like, she cried and told me what was going on. And she was sorry about what? it. Okay, what was she sorry about? Because they had sex. Oh. And this well, is somebody you knew? Yes. And she knew you were away at your grandmother's funeral? Yes. All right. What did you say to him? Well, I asked him, and he told me no at first, and then when she called and told me the truth, that's when he told the truth. When you get that, when you get that feeling, it's hard to, uh, to let go and trust again. So I want to know if you're still cheating. So now you are having these warning signs, and that intuition is going ding, 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 yes, again. Honor. You just haven't gotten a confession. Yes. All right, and that's what you're here for. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Newton, you made a mistake in the past. Yes, Your Honor. 
How did this happen? Well, she was away, and, you know, I was feeling kind of lonely. I was down at the time or whatever. I mean, she's at her grandmother's funeral. Right. You're right. <laughs> this happened, and at first you lied about it. Yes. But then you decided to come clean? Yes, sir. Okay, and what did you tell her? Now, I wanted to be able to go forward with our relationship, so I told her the truth. How did you all even get She together? was coming over to the house while my wife was gone. So, were y'all already having conversation before she left about, no. I like you, you like me? No. Y'all just hooked up? Pretty much, yeah. Woof. Okay. You all got married, and you've been married ever since, correct? Yes, sir. So, there's no way in the world that you would do something else to jeopardize that, right? No, Your Honor. But, well, why do you believe he's cheating now? He's saying, ain't no way I would jeopardize Be this, but you think it because is. Because I went upstairs in the house and he wasn't up there. So, I called his phone, he didn't answer. I called him again and he answered. I said, where you at? He said, at the store. I said, you ain't at no store because I'm at the store. Uh-oh. He said, no, I just left the store. I'm walking up the street. I had, I had, I had family members sitting on a bench okay. to watch uh, one of the houses. So I told him to stay right there. And why'd you do that? Because I wanted to see if he was at the, at the neighbor's house. So you okay. thought something was right. going on. Right. <clears throat> so when he told me he was at the store, I went to the store. And I'm riding around the corner and I'm coming up the street. I said, I don't see you there either. And I could hear him running. I could oh, hear him running. The phone? On through the phone. Because you're still on the phone the right. I could hear him running. Okay. So the family member was like, oh, he just came out of there. He just came out of there. And it was a, a single woman's house. She got three things going on at one time. <laughs> She's got surveillance going on. Video surveillance, audio <laughs> surveillance, yeah, she, and she, remote she, surveillance with a what, friend. Right, right. And she's being an eye spot on the side. I'm like, you got this thing covered. <laughs> that's because, you know, when, when, when it happened the first time, it's, it's hard to, to trust again. So that's why I'm like that. So he kept telling me he didn't do nothing. And he, he you know, and she said she didn't do nothing, but I want to know. What you doing at her house? <laughs> Well, this is the first time I ever went over to the girl's house. You know, I, I met her in the apartment complex uh, a while back. So you were over at this friend's house hanging out? Hanging out. Okay, this female friend. Yes. Why'd you lie? The reason why I lied, Your Honor, because I didn't want her to come over there to the house. You know what I mean? I was just trying to... just trying to make sure that nothing would happen to this lady. So you were more concerned with the lady than you were with what your wife no, would No, no, that's not what I'm saying, Your Honor. Well, nothing gonna happen to her. Something gonna happen to you, though, <laughs> if right. you keep going over there. Right. If you ain't where you ain't supposed to be, that won't be a problem. Right, because I told him if the shoe was on the other foot and I came out of single man house, how would you feel? Right. And how would you feel? I would be upset. Yeah, you would. You'd be, be tight. Upset. So, Ms. Newton, have you found anything that makes you think he's cheating? Yes. Um... Uh, one time, uh, I had picked him up at 3 o'clock in the morning from his friend's house. Not the same friend, is it? No, it's a different one. Oh, okay. Friend's <laughs> and I wonder why he was taking so long. So he came outside, and I put my hand in his pants, and it was silky. So I'm like, why does your stuff feel like you had a come Wait, oh, wait. You said it was lotion. Okay, we got a, we got demonstrations here. Show okay. Dude. What, what we got uh -huh. here? I have the lotion, and I have the lube. Okay, so what was it that you thought you felt on his, his private? Oh, lubricant. lubricant. I, know what, I know what I feel. Okay, okay, lubricant. And when you asked him about that, what did he say? He said, well, lotion. Okay, so, so you... So I told him, lotion don't feel like that, honey. So you got... <laughs> and you can feel the difference. You got lubricant and you got lotion. I, I need to see that for myself. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, you know, see, I... That's the way it felt right there. Yeah, there's a difference. There is a difference. I'm gonna take her word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mr. Cutler, get in the game. Uh, I'll, I'll take your word for it. And then I went in the house. Oh, I'm, I'm there's mad. more. I, I, you know, I got upset, so I went in the house and I asked, who, who in here messing with my husband? And oh. one girl sitting in the, in, in the kitchen, the other one sitting on the floor, she's like, oh, no, that ain't me. My husband right there. So I'm looking, and the, the big girl, she ain't saying nothing, but, fro you know, she was froze. So I was mad. Did anybody say he was with anybody? No, they didn't say nothing. They was just quiet. All right, Mr. Newton, you got a detective for a wife, okay? <laughs> for real. And she sticks her hand down your pants and feels your privates and feels what she says is lubricant, not lotion. How do you explain that at 3 o'clock in the morning? 
Your Honor, I don't remember her sticking my, my her hands down my oh, pants. Oh, I stuck my hand in. I stuck my hand in. You don't in remember that? No. I, I, I stuck my hand in his pants. I gotta say, I think that's the kind of thing I would remember. You Good. know, if I came out of the house <laughs> and I stuck my hand in his pants. In fact, if you called me at three in the morning to come pick you up, you remember that too. Yeah. Because we'd have a conversation. I mean, you had this discussion. She just jams her hand down your pants. <laughs> she didn't say she jammed her hand down there. <laughs> and you let her do that. You don't have any recollection of that? No, I don't. Do you have a recollection of her asking you what took so long? No. Do you have a recollection of her going in the house? No. Okay, were y'all together? You have a recollection of being married? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so what did happen? Well, look, she called me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I told her, well, can you come get me then? So she came down to the house. I didn't have no problem with her coming out. If I was cheating, Your Honor, won't you think I would be not letting her, trying to let her in the house? So I let her in the house. I told her to come on in. You know, I don't got nothing to hide from you, babe. So she came in and whatever. She was telling me, well, I, I think it's about time for you to come home and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, it's time for me to go home. Let's go. So on the way going to, to the house, she was saying, oh, I wanted to go to the hospital to check you to make sure that you wasn't doing it. And I was like, I'm cool. I'm all up for that. She wanted to take you to the I hospital. I wanted to take you to the hospital to make sure that I wasn't cheating. Okay, did you tell him you were going to take it? I sure did. I'm just curious. What you gonna say? Because they gonna say, what's your emergency? What do you say to that? I don't know what I was gonna say. I was gonna make up something for them to check him. <laughs> you know, Mr. Cutler, I, I think we might have enough. What, what we got here? Well, we've got cheating in the past, uh, yes. which he admitted to, and they apparently worked through that, but it's still in the back of Miss Newton's mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, we found, we have the gold earrings that were found in the car that he came forward and gave to her, but she still wants to know well, where they come from. And we have the lubricant on his privates. Lubricant versus lotion. Lubricant versus lotion. <laughs> and we have him being at the neighbor's house uh, and not telling her, and then, you know, him trying to prevent a scene, which obviously uh, has led to her suspicions that he's cheating. All right, well, this court has done a complete and thorough investigation. At this time, the court would like to call former military interrogator Lena Sisko and certified polygraph examiner Kendall Shule to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Raw, would you the court? <laughs> How are you both? Great, Your Honor. How are you? We're good. So, we conducted both an interrogation and a polygraph examination on Mr. Newton. Is that correct? Correct. That's right. All right. So, Ms. Sisko, what did you do to determine about these gold earrings we've been hearing about? When I asked the accused about the gold earrings, he became very animated. So, he was talking with his hands. He actually leaned up into my space, and he gave me direct eye contact. And with conviction, he told me, I have no idea where these earrings came from. I saw no signs of deception, and I believe he was telling the truth. All right. (laughs) But Mr. Shul, you also asked him, when your wife found gold hoop earrings in your car, were those earrings left by a woman with whom you had had physical sexual contact? What was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being Truthful, Your Honor. All right. <laughs> Ms. Sisko, in your investigation, what did you determine happened regarding the night that he was with his friends, over at his friend's house? When I started asking Mr. Newton about this accusation, he laughed out of embarrassment because he told me that he was embarrassed that this was going to come up in court. He admitted that there were about four or five girls in the house. But when I asked him over and over again, was he with a woman, with conviction, he told me no, he had congruent body language, and again, I saw no signs of deception. And Mr. Shaw, you asked him a polygraph question regarding that same evening, correct? I did, Your Honor. You asked him, the night your wife picked you up from your friend's house and confronted two women in the house, Did you have sexual intercourse with either of those women on that night? What was his response to that question? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. I'm still not seeing a smile on Ms. Newton's face. (laughs) 
I think she still needs to be convinced. Okay. <laughs> what did you determine about Mr. Newton and this female neighbor that we've heard about? When I asked him specifically if he had had sex with the female neighbor, he immediately leaned back in his chair and he crossed his arms and his right leg began to shake and he pursed his lips. When I asked again, what happened with that neighbor? He said nothing, but as he said nothing, he shrugged his shoulders. So that is a universal sign for uncertainty. And as he did that, as soon as he ended, he flashed contempt on his face. It's that half smile that looks like a smirk. Oftentimes, after a person lies, they will flash that. And so in that case, I saw numerous indicators of deception, and I do not believe he's telling the truth. So his mouth is saying one thing, his body's saying something completely different. Correct, Your Honor. And Mr. Shaw, you asked him about the neighbor. You asked, have you had sexual intercourse with the female neighbor whose house your wife caught you leaving? What was his response to that question? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Newton. That's crazy, man. It is crazy, but what happened with the neighbor? We never had sex. Sexual contact, kissing, hugging, petting, everything but? None of that. You were asked one other question. You were asked, since you've been married, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than your wife, Mrs. Newton? Mr. Shaw, what was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. <laughs> Ms. Newton, you came here for the truth. You've gotten at least those answers. Well, I'm not okay with the lying. I just want him to tell the truth. Because I would tell him the truth without him asking me. 